Hey there, happy new year. Patty Dominguez here. This is episode 79 of the Positioning to Profit podcast. And thank you for being here yet another year. And in 2021 with big plans and lots of ambition, we're going to feature a new awesome maven entrepreneur, Julie Clark. She's the founder of the Healthy Mirror Method, and she's currently a part of my community, which is Prolific Cafe. You can find out more at prolificcafe.com. And we talk about the whole journey that she's had thus far in, in terms of finding her flow, finding and owning her expertise and pricing. And we talk about how her confidence has gone up as a result of being able to put clarity to the way that she structured everything in, you know, in her business. So it's super, super exciting. And for Julie, I just think she's so lovely and I'm very excited to uh, share her story with you today. Now, also in anticipation of the fact that we want to make this the most awesome year, of course, I put together a masterclass called five strategies to bulletproof your business in 2021. It's complimentary when you head over to positioning to profit.com forward slash 2021. You can grab that masterclass instant access, jump in and discover the five strategies to bulletproof your business in 2021. Again, you can find that over at positioning to profit.com forward slash 2021. And I'm excited to share Julie with you. All right, here we go. Hey there, I'm Patty Dominguez. You're about to discover what it means to position your brand and your business to stand out. This show explores the stories of small business owners just like you who are bringing their message out to the world and impacting their tribe. So if you want to take your business to a category of one status, then hang with me because this podcast shares everything you need to know about how to be more prolific with your brand so that you can have more profits. All right. Well, welcome to the Positioning to Profit podcast. Julie Clark. I had to look down because <laughs> we we have this thing about married name, single name, but your brand, you go by Julie Clark, the amazing Julie Clark, who is a health expert helping parents with children. And you were inspired by your own children. And then just as a little sidebar, you're also a gymnast, which I think is absolutely outstanding. So it is such a joy to have you here on this podcast. And I cannot wait to share you and all these beautiful gifts that you have with uh, the millions of people that are going to be listening to this podcast. No pressure, Julie. I'm happy <laughs> to have you here. <laughs> Thank you, Patty. I'm very happy to be here. Very excited. This is amazing. Okay, so tell everybody, where are you based out of? I am in a seaside town in Kent in the UK. It's very, very... Um, what's the word it's very quaint oh lovely and are you originally from there or did you move there through your marriage or what how did no, you find it right I, I moved there because I always always had a connection to the sea mm. and it was a, a goal of mine and then when I met my um now husband he had a similar goal and yeah we moved here five years ago I just oh, love beautiful. it here love it that's beautiful. I remember this one time, I think it was in in my mid-20s or so, I understood the first time ever feeling the feeling of feeling grounded. Um, I was at the beach and uh, I was just sitting there in the ocean, like right by the ocean, the waves are crashing. And I had this moment that I hadn't felt before that where I was extremely grounded. And for me, I find that the ocean, the, the water, the beach, that that does it for me. Um, so I can only imagine how beautiful it is to be where you are and having that inspiration of the water and land. It just is amazing. I'm sure. Yeah, the sea, the sea for me was, um, there's a little story. I won't, it won't be a long one, but when I was younger, I had really, really bad um, asthma. Mm. And we used to go to my nan's for our summer holidays and she lived at the seaside. And whenever I went, I was well and I could breathe. And so whenever I was by the sea, I would feel healthy and well. So it, it became my goal to move out of like the town and move to the seaside. Oh, that's so brilliant. And I'm sure that inspired you in some way to do what you're doing now. Yeah, although that came on later, um, because I be, I became ill in my in my early 20s. 
almost like similar to your story when you burnt yourself out I did the same yeah. um because you know working in a male dominated environment as I was working as an engineer in the construction industry mm. and working really hard and um yeah totally burnt myself out ended up with chronic fatigue and then that led me down this this journey of health and well-being so tell people what you do what you're really expert at so well I'm I'm a registered nutrition a registered nutritional therapist and an EFT practitioner and I've got lots of strings to my bow when it comes to health and well-being um but mostly I help stressed out busy mums become calm happy and healthy and energized energy is really important to me so they can raise healthy happy kids and I do that with my unique healthy mirror method healthy mirror method. Uh, do you incorporate EFT into that? Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's a key part of it. It's in one of my pillars um, because your health is not just about, this is, I learned this almost the hard way. It's not just about what you eat. Right. It's about, you know, how you're talking to yourself in your head and what you're doing in your general life and your environment and everything. And then when I had children late in life, um, I very quickly realized that they they mirror you. And so all the little flaws and things I didn't necessarily like about myself were just running around like mini versions of me. Oh, that's so, so true. <laughs> yeah, so so, so then I, um, I, I started realizing that the children reflect, you know, my children reflect me. And so I made changes so that they could be as healthy, as happy as possible. And that meant that I needed to be as healthy and happy as possible. I love that. That's so true. So EFT um, is emotional freedom technique. And it's basically, um, I first heard about it back in 2003. Um, I think I've talked about this on the podcast and other um, conversations around the con- uh, this whole thing where I had developed a very bad stutter as a result of childhood trauma. And so I helped heal that whole thing with a combination of NLP and hypnosis, as well as EFT. As At the same time, my son, a couple years later, he had asthma as well. Isn't that interesting? And we took him to a lot of different um, types of holistic healthcare practitioners and EFT was again introduced and it's just so powerful. I don't know the name of the documentary, um, but there was a, there's a specific EFT documentary that talks about how this tapping technique is so powerful, whether you're talking about substance abuse or allergies or some kind of a a block that you have energetically. Am I capturing that right? Yeah, I think it was the one that the documentary done by the tapping solution. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's, it's incredibly powerful and yet so simple. And what a gift to give children to be able to have an output for their emotions, to be able to recognize that they've got emotions, accept them rather than ignore them and then have a release for them. My chi- my children love tapping. Absolutely oh, love it. They're very proficient at it. Yeah, yeah, they are. Oh, that's so amazing. Okay, so talk about the, the healthy mirror method. How did you come about that? Is this something that through your interactions with different clients or you just like kind of intuitively found that? Tell me, talk to me about that process. Well, the method came from when you kind of get quiet and things come into your mind and I'd been working with you on standing out because up until that point I was just thinking that I was just competing with every other nutritionist out there and um, and so we were doing a lot of work on how to position yourself and to stand out and I was looking at all these different things that I do and trying to pull them together. It was almost like I couldn't quite come up with the description for the awesomeness of all these tools and skills that I had. And then this, this mirror thing kept coming up and, Mm. and then I, I I mentioned it in the, in the group call and everybody said, Oh my goodness, that's amazing. And then anybody I've spoken to it, to um about it since have said that they understand the concept and it's something that they they can get excited about as excited as I am about it 
I love that. And I love it for a lot of, of, uh, and here's the important part of it. So anybody that's listening, I think the first part of what Julie said is really, um, is really true. It's such a truism where you're starting out and I'm talking about this as a matter of fact, um, in some ads that I'm running around this concept that you may have your certification or your education or what have you, but those are skills that are as far as the practitioner side of it, but the marketing side is where you are crafting your message so that you're finding out what resonates with your key prospects. And the exciting thing about that is being okay with it being trial and error. And I'm sure you went through many iterations and just kind of thinking it through and figuring out like, how do I say this in a way that's connecting the dots for people so they understand? Yeah, absolutely. It it was a bit of a, you know, a light bulb moment when, when it then came together because you know, the mums that I work with, one of the things they struggle with as well is looking at themselves in the mirror and being able to not just look at themselves physically, but look themselves in the eye and know that they were being true to themselves. And so that element of it coming together with the children was just, yeah, it was just perfect. It is so perfect. And then when you think about like your kids are watching you and there's such a mirror of what, and I love the story that you talked about. It's like, as parents, what we want is for our kids to be healthy. And so the only, uh, the, the way to do that is lead by example. And so it just really kind of brings it all together in such a beautiful way. So do you want to tell us a little bit about what um, are the pillars of this process that you take people through for their transformation? Yeah, I would love to. So there's three pillars. There's the mind, mind empowerment, because obviously, well, not obviously to everybody, but the the way that you speak to yourself and the habits and your whether your glass is half full or half empty has a big impact on whether you can follow through with anything health related. So I've got mind empowerment. And then life reflection is to do with your 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 day-to-day life and the environment you live in and the relationships you have and and what goes into that and then energy expansion so energy is really important to me because of coming from having none to being in a position at nearly 50 being able to go and do gymnastics um that doesn't just include nutrition it includes other aspects and then there's energy expansion because i I'm so into into energy because of coming from a place of having none to then being nearly 50 and being able to go and do gymnastics, like proper gymnastics and throw myself around like a 12 year old. (laughs) And so within the energy expansion, there has to be nutrition because what you fill your body with is important. But all these other things are they overlap. So then you get total well-being when the three pillows pillars combine and that's what took me quite a few years to realize (laughs) probably about 20 years to realize the importance of all of those aspects rather than it just being about what you ate or how much exercise you do right and and there's so much power in that and I really want to bring to light the fact that as a nutritional expert, people may come to you for just the nutrition stuff saying, can you, um, can you give me some meal plans or can you help me with my food intake? But then it's a real bigger, it's a better and bigger conversation that you can have with them when you really dive into applying these, this, this system that you're talking about so that you're giving them an even better outcome. Because here's the deal, right? If you're an expert at what you do, you know, the hidden things that people aren't seeing. And we have that responsibility to help people in a greater way. And that's what you've developed by putting this framework together, which is so powerful. So can you tell us a, a like a little story or something of someone that you've helped that really the, the healthy mirror process or how, how you said it, how it's really impacted um, a client of yours? Yeah. So I have a client actually had a follow up with her, today and she's been with me for a couple of years and we started off she came to me because she was feeling tired all the time and this is so common amongst mums being tired all the time and it started off there and then today when when I spoke to her she said I've got massive news to tell you and she said I've quit my job (gasps) now (laughs) wow 
All right, we are about halfway through with this episode of the Positioning to Profit podcast, and I wanted to stop by with a share that I'm really excited about. Now, the fact that you're here means that you're probably looking for help with your marketing. I mean, let's face it, most of the marketing tips and the buzzwords that you hear out in the marketplace center around tactics that small business owners can employ. The problem with that is that there's a whole lot of tactics out there, but not a whole lot of strategy. And that's where I come in. I help coaches, consultants, and entrepreneurs position themselves for profit. It won't cost you millions of dollars like the bid brands, but it will cost you some time. And in this special book that I put together, you can find it over at positioningguide.com, positioningguide.com. I go into the essentials of positioning to profit, which is a guide that I put together for coaches, consultants, and entrepreneurs struggling to stand out. So head on over to positioningguide.com and grab a copy for yourself. All right, let's get back to the show. Now that sounds very dramatic, but it was because she got to a place where she realized that the job was making her ill. And despite doing all the other things, she got a diet, right? She was exercising, but she had that constant stress running in the background and wasn't really living her true purpose. Right. And she got to that, which we covered under the life um, reflection. Mm. When she finally got that and she just feels completely different. So yeah, it's, it's so nice to see. That's so great. And that's such a testament to the power of what you've put together, like you said, over 20 years. Um, and how you, it, it's, it's awesome when it, it works for your, your own business, but when you're doing it for other people's business, it's like, there's something that's like you 10 X the feeling like this is so exciting. Like it really works, you know, because you know that you've, uh, really provided or helped people with that transformation. And it's almost like a validation, like, okay, this is working. This is a system that I know. And what happens is, is that it builds confidence, you know, it builds confidence in our work, which is really empowering. Is that, is that what's happening to you as you've applied this? Yeah. And I think it's, you know, it's the same as the work that I've been been doing with you and the work that I do with my clients is that the 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 term life changing gets banded around a lot, but it, it really is to the person when you can facilitate their journey in the right direction for them when they've been lost. Yeah. Yeah. That's really powerful. Yeah. So talk to me about the marketing that you've done in the past. Like what didn't work or some standouts where, cause we all have horror stories, right? I mean, I just got off a phone, the phone with the client. She was talking about how she had spent, you know, umpteen thousand dollars on stuff. And we see these numbers and we hear these numbers or conversations an absolute horror story. So can you share a couple or one or two that really stood out for you from the marketing standpoint? I think when, like, I didn't have a clue. I really didn't have a clue because, you know, when you go and learn how to be a therapist to help someone, you don't Mm -hmm. get any business training at all. Mm -hmm. And because you're in that field of wanting to help people, there's also that element of, of, um, the, the the block around asking for money for helping someone as well mm. so my marketing was just I mean what did you call it it was the scattergun approach or something <laughs> it was yeah flailing I, around I was flailing I, around well I call it random acts of marketing right <laughs> where you're just like putting stuff out there because you know you got to do some kind of marketing but there's no real like a, a, a system, a strategy, a process for what you're doing so that you're really put, putting yourself into this light of like, okay, this is my blueprint. This is what I'm going to follow. And this is the outcome that I anticipate. And so I always say that from a marketing standpoint, it's really behavioral psychology and data, right? Behavior psychology, yeah. the number side of it that we have to recognize. So, yeah. Yeah. So I was just doing random acts of marketing <laughs> and just I, I just didn't, I, I don't think I really fully appreciated what it it meant to stand out. And I was just in that, the same as everybody else mm-hmm. that was a nutritionist saying, you know, do this diet plan or do that. And, and I kind of had a feeling that there was much more to it, but I just couldn't put it in the right words or put it in the right way so that 
so that I could stand out. So yeah, I've spent money on Facebook ads and I've done all the things that you probably know that just don't work. Right. And, and the reason why it doesn't work is because you have to have that positioning in place foundationally. And then it's, and then it's about having that supreme clarity. And then it's the, from a differentiation standpoint where you've been able um, to develop some. So, so, so happy for where you're headed. And do you want to talk about a, a quick breakthrough that you had, like what, like a week ago in terms of even um, because the two things, and I'm hosting a boot camp that's coming up next week. And so I'm seeing some of the comments that are coming in as to what the biggest challenge is for some people. And the biggest challenge is always the same thing. I don't know how to generate more leads. And then I'm afraid of selling. I'm afraid of putting that, that, that offer out there. They don't know the offer side of things. So I know we, in our group, you had a bit of a breakthrough when you were talking about pricing on your website. So do you want to share a little bit about that and what has transpired since then? Yeah, absolutely. It was like, it was such an epiphany, but it's so simple. I just, we'd been on the call and I'd asked you um, about, it was to do with, yeah, putting the prices on my website because I'd lumped myself in with all the other therapists that, you know, you you look up and you say, oh, I want to see a chiropractor. So how much is that going to cost me? Or, mm-hmm. you know, I'd lump myself in with the, the charging for your like, consultation mm-hmm. and um and you'd said not to put the prices on my website and and I I'd um had some resistance to that and I remember I came off the call and I was a bit like oh bloody patty and you know it was a bit I was a bit like that but I went to bed and then I got up in the morning and the first thing that came to me was you're not selling consultations you're selling a transformation and therefore it's not about the price and I'm not then in the same boat as all the other nutritionists and the therapists and I just totally got that in that moment but it seems really obvious but it just until that that clarification it was still missing for me I love it and I know how excited you were because you posted in the group or the group where you mentioned it you're like I can't believe it's been and it's interesting because it's it's we can hear things different ways different times but it's not until we're ready to really receive it to really see it and just be like boom okay now I got that piece of the puzzle right and so that's the value of all like also of course, you know, having the guidance, but also the community, the support, the consistency and the whole thing to keep things going. So talk to me about what you're envisioning for 2021, since it's been such an interesting year this year. What are we hoping for 2021 for you, Julie? Yeah, this this has been an interesting year to say the least. So at the moment, I'm in the, in the midst of changing everything. So my, my website is being changed so that I can position myself to stand out Mm -hmm. and my healthy mirror method has been put together in I'm so excited about this it's going to launch in January it's been put together as a really easy step-by-step process that I can take a group of mums through great and yeah I'm, I'm really excited to see how next year goes now that I've got my messaging right and I know who my clients are Mm -hmm. and I know where they are Mm -hmm. and all the stuff that, you know, I should have known, but I didn't know. You don't know what you don't know, right? You don't know what you don't know. Correct. Yeah. And so I, I, at least now when I'm doing anything, it's, um, it's not, I'm not flailing around anymore. I've got my, my aim on the target. I love it. I love to hear that. Okay. So as we're transitioning, um, person, place or a thing what is something one thing that greatly inspires you Hmm. person place or thing probably oh this is going to sound so corny but at the moment (laughs) my my husband because he is a a dj and he's not been able to work this year Mm. and so he's taken on all the household stuff Oh, all right. We're so you're saying about your husband, he's really 
um, taken on the role of just being the, the, the anchor in the family, <laughs> keeping it all together for y'all. Yeah, exactly. So that's quite, in, it's inspiring to me that he, you know, that, that support that you get when someone really believes in you. Yeah. And so it's just nice that I can just get on with my work off the back of all the, all the stuff I've learned from you, Patty, and I can put it into place and then hopefully he can get back to the job he loves doing next year. Oh, I'm hoping that. Uh, yeah. Always good for a good DJ. I, I swear, all the, I, um, I have a brother, um, I'm just one of two, and he's a competitive ballroom dancer. So anybody who's in the arts, they are just, ri- and I'm like praying that this stops you because these, all the creators are just at a standstill. Um, and it, it's, I cannot wait, right, for the music, the artists, the, oh, the creators, yeah. the ones that are, that bring joy, they need to get back into it. So yeah, I'm absolutely. in the same boat as you. Yeah. Oh, so that's really awesome that he's helping you. There's nothing better than having um, your significant other be so supportive. I I have one of those too. My husband's really awesome. And I could always say, oh, okay, I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to close everything down because I want to be a circus clown. And he'd be like, all right, how do we support you? Like, how, like, how do we make this happen, babe? You know, <laughs> that, and that's just like the, the absolute best when you have that. So I'm super happy to hear that you have that too. Yeah, it's, it is true. I mean, he did do that to me when we got off our honeymoon, he did say, so I'm going to give up my, my full-time job and I'm going to be a DJ. <laughs> Well, you got to do it for better, for worse. That's part of the deal. Okay. So if you weren't an entrepreneur, what would you be doing as a career? So if you weren't doing what you're doing now? I would be a Radio 1 DJ. <laughs> I, I would totally listen in because I love I think I love your sense of humor. You have this <laughs> cheeky way about you. I just absolutely love it. I see that. I definitely see that. Um, okay, Julie, and what positioning advice would you give somebody who is looking to grow their business? Well, they should definitely do your boot camp. That's a no brainer. Um, And and obviously learn from the experts like yourself. I think if you've been trying hard and not getting anywhere, then you've got to be able to look at at things like positioning and not Mm -hmm. enough people are talking about it. So Mm -hmm. yeah, just go, go follow Patty and she'll sort you out. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Julie. And Julie, how, how does somebody get in touch with you to find out more about your, the beautiful mirror method that you talked about your coaching EFT or any of the products? Because I know you have a a whole host of amazing products that you help with. How does somebody get in touch with you? Probably best to go to my website, which as I said, is going is, is currently being updated, but it's julieclarknutrition.co.uk. julieclarknutrition.co.uk. We're also going to have the links on the show notes page so you can connect with Julie. And then how do people find you on social? Which one are you mainly on? Facebook, Instagram? Facebook, Facebook is mine. I am on the Instas, but not so good at those. But yeah, Me- I'm on Facebook. <laughs> Me too. It's so funny. My um, social media manager, Charlotte, she's like, can you do a video uh, or like, can you do an Instagram? I'm like, ah, like I, I, I push her on it and I'm like, okay, let Charlotte help you Patty, because that's, what's really she's doing. I'm like, why am I fighting her when I'm the one that's like, she's trying to help me here. So I'm in that same boat. Do you think it's an age thing with the Instagrams? I think it's an age thing because Facebook is, is older. And I think I got my head around that one and then Instagram come along and and mess me up. (laughs) Well, Julie, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm eternally 28, so I'm not sure. I'm 12. Well, let's stick with that. And we'll just keep saying that. So, all right, Julie, Julie Clark, thank you so much for being on Positioning to Profit. Again, all of the links for how to get in touch with Julie will be on the show notes. And thank you for being here today. Thank you, Patty. It was great. Thank you so much for checking out the Positioning to Profit podcast. If you haven't already done so, please make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new episodes. And also, it would mean the world to me if you would take a quick moment to leave a rating and review on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, or your favorite podcast player. It really helps to get the word out about the podcast and, of course, the featured guests. And lastly, please make sure to connect with me on social media. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. I'm on all of them and use hashtag 
positioning to profit so that I can (laughs) search you out and connect that way too. All right. Thanks so much. See you next time.